Well, I followed my father into fishing when I was 19 and started fishing for lobsters. Well, my father started with a, with a homemade wooden boat in Morto and uh, we fished out of Ilfagum ever since with the bigger boats and I've not, I've not missed one season since, since 1985, which is quite depressing. <laughs> I work with Chris and Kirk and I work 190 days a year at sea. We catch crabs and lobsters in the summer months. Yeah, our first pots are outside the harbour on the first bit of rough ground and then we work bits and pieces of rough ground all the way to Lundy. It's always good for lobster and crab there. I used to lift the pots in until I had a hernia two years ago, so now the, the boys do all the lifting. Chris lifts them in, empties them, Kirk baits and stacks. My only job now is to measure the lobsters and keep the boat straight on the gear. Uh, any lobsters with eggs, any buried hens, uh, we put back. The buried hens are released so that they can carry on and spawn, and then you get ready to shoot the pots away. We, uh, we have to be very careful where we shoot these pots once we hold them, as you can't shoot pots willy-nilly around the island. Uh, the east side of the island is a no-take zone, which we have to keep well clear of. Some of our favourite days are when scientists like Sarah come with us to research the lobsters. The wonderful thing about Lundy no-take zone is there's always somebody watching from the shore, there's somebody with binoculars on you, so it's really easy to police. Just in front of us, two green boys there. Oh yeah, it's a long line. There, it's, it's a long line. line. We'll always pick up rubbish whenever we can find it. The no-take zone was set up uh, with the agreement of the fishing boats who were here at the time, including myself. This has been the only no-take zone for many, many years, which allowed that opportunity to start looking at the benefits of closing an area to fishing. And so, you know, the, the research that's gone on, that showed uh, the abundance within the no-take zone, the increased population of lobsters, um, and the, the potential for spillover. It's been fantastic ever since. I mean, there's definitely an overspill from it. As far as I know, all the fishermen that work here are all really happy with it. I mean, it's, it's full of buried lobsters, so nobody can get at them. They're all spawning away and, it's, you know, hopefully helping the rest of the island. If I just turn her over, you can see that she's buried because her underside is, is full of eggs. Now, in order for her to actually become egg-bearing, she needs to mate with the male, and she does this when she's actually lost her shell, when she's shed her hard shell and she's soft. The male is still hard, but when she's soft, she produces a pheromone to attract the male in so he doesn't eat her. So as you can see there, I can't tell you how many she's carrying, but it could be um, anything from uh, 10,000 eggs to a large female will carry up to a million. Nice. She'll carry these for nine months, just like a, like a human. And whilst they're under the tail, she uses the swimmerettes to aerate them and to get food to them. So what I'm going to do with this uh, female now is to tag her and then release her back into the sea. The one thing we urgently need to do is stop all buried lobsters from being landed. The females with eggs uh, that we catch are released in uh, all of the Devon area. It would be better for lobsters and everybody concerned if that was nationwide. We collect and shoot the pots 12 times throughout the day, so it's a long 12 hour day. We don't shoot the pots like we did in my father's day. Uh, they used to go over the side, but it's always the most dangerous part of the job. But now they go out through the stern, which is much safer for the crew. Some things never change. I'm still repairing flags, and I'm the only one in Ilfacoon who still uses them. We are very much still a family business. Now the crabs and lobsters will be landed now and wheeled up to my house. And my wife Jenny sells lobsters from our tanks at home and uh, two of my sisters, Kathy and Sally, sell lobsters and crabs from uh, their little shop in Moore's Home. The downside of the job is getting up at two o'clock in the morning, which never gets any easier. But I always enjoy every day. There's always something interesting. The wildlife's amazing and I can't see why we can't continue fishing as we are, as we've always done, providing the buried lobsters are released and the undersized lobsters are put back and is managed sensibly. There's a living for everybody.